off the Horn of Africa in the middle of the world's busiest shipping lanes, heavily armed warships are playing a seafaring game of cat and mouse. Their quarry, pirates. Over the last year in 2008, piracy generated somewhere between 50 and 80 million dollars in ransom. They're certainly raking in the money, seizing ships and taking hostages. In the last 12 months, there have been more than 100 attacks. It's a deadly game. I could kill 60 pirates that were on the beach. In the port of Djibouti, French, American and Turkish warships are preparing once again to do battle at sea. So how did the world's most powerful nations have their shipping industry held to ransom by a pack of pirates here in the Gulf of Aden? Well, it's got a lot to do with the humble lobster and a place called Puntland, which until a year ago, most people had never even heard of. Nothing about Puntland, even getting there, is normal. The only planes that'll fly in are clapped out old Soviet era turboprops. The in flight entertainment is unique. The plane is infested with tiny cockroaches. Bye. Bye. Hello, you. Still, the crew is accommodating. Sit anywhere you like, even the co pilot's seat if you want. How long will it be? An hour. Approximately one hour. It's a thrill seeker's delight at a budget price. 140 bucks gets you to Basaso, Pirate Central. For an extra 50, you can go to Mogadishu. But very, very dangerous in Mogadishu. Yes. Tomorrow, we are going to fly to Mogadishu. Not that Basaso should be taken lightly. A British journalist was recently abducted here as he tried to fly out. He spent 40 days in a cave before being released. Welcome to Bosaso. Oh, well, this this is Bosaso Airport. Thank you and, very much. And uh, I hope you guys will have a uh, good time while you're here. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the try. best that you can. If there's an upside to Bosaso, Issa Farah is it. Until a few months ago, he was a PhD student at Melbourne's La Trobe University. Issa's now returned as part of Puntland's new government, and he's brought the president's own security detail to see we don't end up living in a cave. I'm very happy to hear that. Well, very happy to hear that. Thank you very much. Well, that's agreement. <laughs> we'll do our it's, best. A, it's, it's a deal. A few hundred meters into Basaso Township itself, and it's time for a reality check. Up front there, Issa, we have um, a security contingent, yes. your, your bodyguard who's armed. That's, oh, the, yes, that's my car. And I've got in there my, uh, my, my personal bodyguard, my driver. And at the back, we've got around uh, six personnel. Sadly, because of the piracy and kidnapping, and especially being um, a journalist, and why, too, uh, that's, that's been quite a bit of problem in relation to uh, thugs, so uh, I want you to feel safe. Feeling safe in Somalia is relative. 20 years ago, the central government collapsed and the capital Mogadishu descended into chaos. Somalia became a failed state and its people started to die by the thousands of starvation. While the Western aid agencies worked desperately to ship food into the country, the world's fishing fleets sensed an opportunity. Somalia's 1,100 kilometer coastline was now undefended. Trawlers from Asia, the Middle East and Europe moved in for the kill. Somalia's fishing grounds were devastated.
On the outskirts of Basasso, you'll find the remnants of the fishing industry, one lonely so, container. This is fresh fish for today. This is fresh fish for today. How is the catch? Is there as much fish today as... No, no, no. Before, we were catching about 5 tonne, 6 tonne, 10 tonne per day. But now we are catching 300, 400 kilo per day. That's a whopping 96% reduction in the local catch. If you want to talk to Somali fishermen about the destruction of their fisheries, there's no point looking for them down at the beach. Most of them are banged up in Basaso's jail. Ali is just one of about a hundred fishermen jammed into this cell. All through the 90s, they witnessed firsthand the foreign trawler's dirty work. Soon enough, intermittent skirmishes turned into a well-orchestrated campaign by the Somali fishermen against the trawlers. And so Somalia's humble fishermen came to be seen as pirates. We're about to get to, to the port. It's the only port that effectively functioning and modern uh, in this area. To get an idea of whether the pirates are seen as heroes or villains in Puntland, your best bet is to go down to the local harbour. These days, Basaso's harbour is a hive of activity, and the Minister for Ports was more than happy to give us a tour. Even though it's too small, yes. it's a very important port, you know. Yes. It looks but not that long ago, his port was virtually empty, courtesy of the pirates. What kind of problems were they causing for you in the port, the pirates? In the, kidnapping in the ports, uh, the ships. So they don't differentiate whether it came from Australia, from South America, whether uh, it's owned by the Somali people, whether it's owned by Americans. They are the same to their uh, mind. They are the same, everything the same to them. Only what they need is money, you know. They, they, they need money only, you know. According to the port minister, the fishermen turned pirates have long since abandoned any principles. Now he's playing it tough, just like the pirates. Did you kill any of them? Yes. We, one time we killed three and caught nine, you know. Oh, now, where, where are they now? They're in the chair. In the jail? Yes. He's not exactly enamoured of the world's navies cruising off the coast either, but he does have a sense of humour. Call it, if you like, the lobster factor. They are catching the lobster, you know. Yeah. They are busy. Instead of uh, fighting with, against that people, you know, against the sea pirates, sea pirates, you know, they are busy in fishing as well. Who think that? So you think that the, you think the navies of, of the... Uh, of the world that are off the coast here in the Gulf of Aden yeah. aren't chasing pirates, they're fishing. In a way, you know, I can say in a way, because what I think is that, that way is, why, don't, why don't they catch, you know? So I think they're busy fishing. Why don't they catch a big, very huge gunship cannot catch a small boat, you know? Talk to the French Navy, and they don't think they're wasting their time. As the President of the Republic, Nicolas Sarkozy, said, we will never leave the pirates unpunished. Vice Admiral Gerard Vallin is in charge of naval operations. The French are playing it hard. <laughs> Just
Just a few months ago, Somali pirates seized the luxury French yacht Le Penon. It would prove to be a big mistake by the hijackers. The French Navy swung into action, and they sent a combat film crew along to document the operation. The French quickly discovered the exact position of the hijacked yacht. No less than three warships closed in on the pirates. Le Ponant, encerclé, deux forces maritimes qui sont le Bouan, la Jeanne d'Arc et le Var. On va faire un petit zoom. In Paris, the decision to act came right from the top. French Defence Minister Hervé Morin. On a immédiatement des des réunions autour du président de la République qui a géré personnellement cette crise, en coordination avec le chef d'état-major des armées et moi-même. Vice Admiral Gérard Valland briefed the crew. Voilà, alors encore bravo pour tous, bravo pour cette réactivité. The French commandos checked and rechecked the weapon systems. A key member of the squad a sniper. On the yacht, the pirates had opened up negotiations with the owners. Two million dollars delivered in a suitcase would see the 30 hostages released and they could have the yacht back as well. En priorité, une, la récupération des otages euh, et des porteurs de valises. En priorité, deux, punir euh, les demandeurs de rançon. En priorité, trois, c'est récupération de, des valises de l'argent. Once the commandos had delivered the money and freed the hostages, the French sprung an ambush. We surprised the pirates, and I, I had six helicopters on board with special forces on board. The pirates had fled with the money to the Somali coast. The helicopter with the sniper on board swooped down on the pirates' four-wheel drive. We made a very precise shoot to stop the engine. The pirates legged it from the disabled vehicle, but they still hadn't thrown in the towel. The pirates went outside with their Kalashnikov to fight, but they saw my six helicopters above with special forces, not killing them, but warning shoot around them. And so they understood that it was finished. They hand up, we land the helicopters, and we took them to be sent to France. Les otages sont libérés. On a récupéré les pirates. On a récupéré la rançon. Euh, on est heureux parce que on n'est jamais à la brique, les choses se passent pas exactement comme on le souhaite. The French had won a notable victory. It's the only time any ransom money has ever been retrieved of the more than 50 million dollars paid out to Somali pirates. The payment was around $600,000, it seems, uh, maybe a little bit more, um, and they recovered around one or 200000 London's Chatham House is the home of one of the world's most prestigious international think tanks. Roger Middleton is their Horn of Africa specialist. It is really very big impact. It seems the Somali pirates may still have the last laugh. The French raid might have violated Somali sovereignty. Well, there is a real danger that what happened there could, could go horribly wrong in court and the pirates could be released and, and then France would be faced with nine pirates or 12 pirates milling around Paris, probably claiming asylum and all sorts of things that, you know, the laws of unintended consequence. And there's another unintended consequence of this 21st century gunboat diplomacy. It's making a lot of people, besides the pirates, rich, especially in England. 
In the city of London, piracy is a nice little earner for brokers and lawyers. The place has become a clearinghouse for doing business with pirates. So the cost to the shipping industry in total is around $200 million. Now that's made up of about 80 million or 50 million in ransom payments, which goes inside Somalia. The rest of that money is made up in lawyers' fees, uh, fees to, to ransom negotiators. And bear in mind, the guys who deliver the money, they get about a million dollars for each drop-off. So to deliver a million dollars, it costs you a million dollars. Back in Puntland, it was time to go and visit the president. It's a seven-hour drive to the capital, Garawa. But being Somalia, the preparations are a bit more than kick the tires and check the oil. These guys are well-trusted and highly professional. So you will be traveling with them. Uh, you will be sleeping with them with the next few days to make sure that when I take you to Garawa, you will come back. Puntlanders joke their country is the promised land. God gave it to them because no one else wanted it. We are a proud society, but we cannot deny we've been violent to each other. We've been violent to our neighbors. We've been violent to our fellow Somalia. Piracy is part of it, and it has to end if Somalia is ever to be rebuilt. If it works, it'll be an extraordinary event. A ruined nation remade by refugees. We need to develop law and order. We need to develop a good governance system. The president, the finance minister, the defense, uh, the head of the defense force. You know, all of us are from Australia and all of us are from Melbourne. And we all sit in front of each other and we say to, to ourselves, we must do something. We must be different from you know, forefather, our forefathers and say, we must lead our own people from, from where we are to maybe the promised land, where we all think Somalia will be a better place one day. Thanks very much, is it? No problem. And how many of you are returnees from the Western countries? President Abdurrahman Mohamed Farol's government is just three months old. Six months ago, he was a PhD student in Melbourne. Now he's got the world enraged at the pirates operating from his shores. If they are really interested in eradicating the piracy problem, they have to cooperate with us. So we are going also to discuss this today. His solution to the piracy problem is obvious. Stop spending hundreds of millions patrolling the coast and start fixing Puntland. The annual cost, about a tenth of what's been paid out in ransom so far. So for three to five million dollars per year... Yes, that's a rough you, estimate. That way. Rough estimate. You could, if not eliminate, you could reduce the piracy problem. Yes. The trouble is, no one in the international community has been listening to the president and his government. Do you think you'll put that forward now? To whom? We have to, have, we have to find the interested parties. Ironically, the pirates may have recently done President Farol a favour. In the wake of the attempted hijacking of a US merchant ship two weeks ago, Washington is talking of helping Puntland's fledgling Coast Guard. The pirates have a great business model that works for them. Seize ships, get ransom, make millions. As an international community, we have got to stop that. It all comes down to a matter of trust. Well, in the long run, an effective anti-piracy force has to be based inside Somalia and come from Somalia. Now, there's a, a lot of concerns, obviously, in Puntland and putting money into Puntland. How stable is the president's government? And perhaps not quite so stable is the answer to that. We've seen in the late 90s several attempts to establish coast guards in Puntland, all of which failed as governments changed and situations changed through the country. And many of those earlier guys who were trained as coast guards are now pirates. 
Don't record me, white boy. Don't record me. I will kick your ass. Eradicating the piracy problem may take some time. On our last day in Puntland, we revisited Basaso's jail. There had been an attempted breakout. Oh, they dug a hole to try to get out here. They were tunneling out. The pirate inmates had showed great ingenuity. Starting with a spoon, they'd almost engineered the collapse of the entire building. Even the prison boss had a resigned admiration for their skills. Ali, the fisherman turned pirate, was more poetic. The pirates have plastered the jail walls with their tragic graffiti. They'll have plenty of time to add more. Many of them were convicted and sentenced last week to three years prison. They're also victims of a blighted country and the world's neglect to actively engage in solving the problems of the failed state of Somalia. <laughs>